All right, everybody. We have got a treat here today. We're here in my house. There's my dog. This is some lamp that I've set up. Then I had to rig up some sort of articulating arm. Uh, the reason is that uh, uh, the university's basically been closed, and I don't have the uh, let's see, I don't have the keys or access to the places where we can film things. So you see, I'm jamming this in here. All right, now we've got. Let's see. We've got our problem, and then we can move this in and out. Now, one problem we have with our problem is that I can only see a little bit at a time. So, what we need to do is tip this back just a little bit, and now we should be able to see the whole thing. But I wanted it to be... Yeah, okay. Well, here we go. Now we're talking about the forwarding unit. And if you hear anything in the background, that's just my kids. And so, let's take a look at this. Got a forwarding unit. And we have the output bits. So these are output bits. And they are two bits a piece. What they do is they tell the MOXs what to forward. Now, zero is always going to be the default. Now what we have to do is figure out which one, either of the data memory phase or the write back phase, is the second and third input. So if we look at this line down here, this line right here is from the right back phase and we can trace it up and we see that goes to the middle ones okay so I'm going to put a little right back here and here all right so the right back then uh, corresponds to So if we want to forward the right back, it's zero, 01. Incidentally, on the example I handed out in class, there was much gnashing of teeth and weeping because it was a crappy uh, copy paste from the book. So just for Danny, and the good Danny, not the bad Danny, I re-pasted the better figure for this exam problem. So then, if we want to go from the mem phase, that's going to be a 1, 0. All right. So that's our output. And remember that we've got our inputs. Okay. And then the input here is going to be, I'm going to write it down on our forwarding unit here. Okay, so we trace this in. Now E is going to be this line right here, and E, if we trace it back, is going to be RS. This is going to be RT. But they're going to be from the EX phase, so we need to mark them with their corresponding stage. EX, RS, RT. Okay, so then we look at this, and A, well, A is going to be from the mem phase, and it's going to be RD. Okay, I hope you can see that. Then this is going to be mem dot right back. Okay, and just to be sure, we've got five and we've got one. So it's a five bit signal that indicates the destination register. Likewise, here we got the same sort of thing a five bit line and a one bit line. And then this is going to be C, is going to be right back. And I've messed up on this one, not right back. I got right back on the brain. This is going to be reg right. Okay, reg right. Then this is going to be right back dot RD. 
And remember, we think about this as the ulti ultimate destination. I used a capital D here in order to indicate that it's not the lowercase rt or the lowercase r d field. It's the destination. And that would have been muxed out here so that we know that traveling along this line is the true destination. Finally, we have the right back. And the right back has a reg right. Okay. So now anytime we see reg right in these two phases, either mem or reg or right back to be zero, we can't cause a um, we can't cause a hazard. All right. So hopefully we've got those understood. And let's take a look at this first one. So uh, we want to take a look at E and F. Now these are the sources. Okay, those are the sources in the execute phase. And we look, and for the red writes, this writes back and this writes back. And so we know that we might have a hazard. So the nine, okay, so this is gonna be, A is gonna be from the mem phase. Okay, and the 12 here, is going to be from the right back phase. And so uh, that's C. Okay, and these are the destinations. So remember, this is going to be five bits, and this is going to be five bits. We know that these can't be one bits because they're greater than zero or one. So what we have is, and we remind ourselves, this is RS, and this is RT. All right, so in the mem phase, we have a match between the mem phase and RT. Now remember, RT is associated with the second um, mux, the B mux that we like to call it, and the right back phase is matching the RS. So if we go back here, and remember if we want to, uh, we want to forward the right back phase, we do a zero one. If we want to forward the mem phase, we want to do a one zero. So for mux A, which is going to be associated with the RS field, RS matches the right back phase. So for mux A, we want to do a zero one. And then for mux B, we indeed have a, um, the RT matches the mem phase, so we want to do a one zero. There we go. All right, moving on. So here we've got a reg write of zero. That means who cares? It's not writing back. So the mem phase can never cause a hazard. We never have to worry about that. Then we look at the write back phase. I'm sorry. Yes. Then we look at the write back phase. And it is writing back. Okay, that's writing back. We might have a problem. Then we check, and with the RS field, it's a 22. It matches, but it's not being written back. So we can just forward regular. However, 15 and 15, there's a match there. And remember, this is from the write back phase, and this is for mux B. And so for mux B, we want to use the right back and we encode that with zero one. Finally, we have a 14 in the mem phase and it does indeed write back. So there's a problem, there's a possible problem there. Then for the D line or the write back reg file, this can never cause a hazard because it doesn't write back. All right. Then we want to look at the match. Well, 14 and 14 match here. So then we're going to want to do something about that. But this three that's on the second mux, no problem. We don't have any issues there. So what we need to do is forward from the mem phase to the RS phase. And we do that by hitting a one zero in there. And that's what we got.